Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode of Luminar 2018 Tips and Tricks, we're going to take a close look at the HSL filter. The HSL filter is a great filter to affect three different attributes of the colors in your image. Those attributes are hue, saturation, and luminance. And if you have an image where the color just doesn't pop, it doesn't look like it was the day you photographed it. It just looks like the color's flat. The U saturation luminance filter does a great job taking care of those issues. So to apply the filter, we're gonna go up and add filters to open our filters catalog. And it's located down here in the professional section. It's simply called HSL. And we'll click on that and you can see it added the filter. I'm gonna close down the filters catalog to give us a more unobstructed view. And you can see there's a number of colors I mentioned, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta. And you could affect three different attributes, the hue of each of those colors, the saturation of each of those colors, and the luminance of each of those colors. So simply put, if you want to make the blue sky brighter, you could go to luminance, go to the blue slider, and move it to the right, and anything that is blue in the image will get brighter or darker. By moving that slider. You also then could affect the saturation. Go to blue. I could make the saturation more um, intense by moving the slider to the right. Or I really could make anything that's blue in the image uh, black and white, just a shade of gray, by simply moving these sliders. So you really could do a lot with an image. In the case of this image here, the sky's nice. Uh, you know, it's pretty right out of the box is a pretty deep blue. But the greens I'm not too happy with. The front part here where the brighter greens, I kind of like that. But down or out here in the distance, this really wasn't like it appeared when I took the picture. There was a lot more depth back there in that mid-ground background area. The trees were more discernible between each of them. And the little trick I often use to help add back a little bit of that depth is I'll affect the the luminance um, attributes of green and yellow. So what I'll typically do is I'll go to yellow first and I'll move it to the right to make anything that's yellow in the image brighter. And you can see it definitely made the front part here brighter. But if you look in the background, I'm gonna reset it and move it to the right. And you look in here and you can see how it's definitely bringing out the yellows that are in those trees and grasses and the greens then are staying darker so it gives us that little more kind of depth that I'm looking for and that I remember seeing when I took the shot. To help it along I will often then go to green and move the luminance value of green down and that usually helps balance it out and doesn't look as uh, radioactive for lack of a better term. So I would turn the luminance value of yellow up, green down, and usually on a landscape image where I have an expansive sky, I will take the luminance value of blue and bring that down just to make this uh, blue sky a little deeper blue. Uh, kind of the effect you would have if you used a polarizer. Often when you do this, uh, the yellows, it isn't in this case, but sometimes you will find that if you brighten the yellow up, it'll lose a little bit of its saturation. Then you would go to the saturation tab and you would go to the yellow slider and increase the saturation of yellow. And you could then come in and balance out, see if there's any oranges in the image. Usually what I would do to see what colors are actually in the image is I would go to the luminance tab. Then I would just move that slider for that color back and forth. And you can see as I move red, it is affecting some of these um, wild flowers or weeds, whichever way you want to put it. And I prefer to try to keep everything more natural. And I tell you the honest God truth, I don't remember what those look like. So I would tend to leave that alone because I want to try to keep the colors looking natural as I remembered it when I shot the scene. Unfortunately, the sensors on some cameras, they tend to flatten it out in certain lighting conditions. And that's why this HSL tab really shines because it helps you bring back that pop you saw when you were standing there. Then I'll go to the luminance tab of like orange and move that back and forth. You could see how that is 
affecting some of those weeds that are more in the water. And I recall those weren't that bright, so I'm going to pull orange down a little bit. And yellow and green we already did. Aqua will affect the water, of course, and the sky a little bit. You can see it's affecting out here in the haze in the far hill out there when I move aqua a little bit. So I'm going to pull that one down a little. Blue we already took care of. I don't think purple. Well, purple's affecting the sky slightly. I think I'm going to make that a little brighter. Just push that up. And magenta probably little, if anything. Yeah, magenta's not doing anything. So that's how I normally will go about uh, processing a landscape image with the HSL filter, uh, that this landscape image that would have water and sky and grasses and trees in it. And that's the way I would go about it. If you find that your image has some false color in it, which happens sometimes under lighting conditions, if you're way up at a higher altitude and you took images of mountain peaks and sky, sometimes when your sensor and camera render the image, it comes out a little purple. If that's the case, you could go to the hue slider and you could either go to the blue slider itself and move it to try to remove the purple or go to the purple slider itself and move it so it renders more towards blue. And that usually will take care of the image. You also, of course, could use the hue sliders for creative purposes if you want to give a false color, if you want the sky uh, to look like, you know, more cyan or more more gentle-like. You could move the uh, blue slider itself and maybe the aqua sl slider as well uh, to try to give that false color that you're looking for. Um, again, then saturation, many times be careful, especially if you bring the luminance value of a color up, you'll start to wash out some of the color, and you could bring back that luminance um, with the saturation slider or the color with the saturation slider. Also, you could use the saturation slider for selective color. Let's say that I only want, I want everything in this image black and white except the sky. You'd simply take the saturation of every color that isn't the sky down to zero. And then you have a near black and white image down here but the sky is blue. Now, of course, there is a little bit of blue in the water, and there might be a little bit of blue in other places, so that's going to come in. But that's how you would do a selective color with the HSL tab. Typically, I don't care for selective color that often. Um, I do think it has its place, but not on this image. I don't think we need it. So I'll reset those sliders, and I think I want to bring up the saturation of green a little bit and there is before the filter and after the filter before the filter and after the filter so you could see how with the HSL filter you could really add back that pop that you lost um, when you photograph the scene I think it's a very powerful filter and I use it quite often thank you everyone that watches my videos I truly do appreciate it and I know I say this at the end of every video and I don't want you to think it's just me saying it. I really do mean it and I feel it. Thank you. I really do appreciate everyone that watches my videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.